Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stephen Kavanagh. I have the pleasure of being the Dean of the Betty R. A. Moore School of Nursing, of course, here in Sacramento. And from a personal point of view, delighted to see you students, white coat, big event today, but equally as important to see so many parents, friends, family here today. This COVID thing has uh, deprived us of one of the most important things we do, and that's meeting you. And so today we're very, very pleased that you are here today. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, mark for you a very important milestone on your journey be to become a physician assistant. I also want to war uh, extend a warm welcome and give a wave to all those people on Facebook Live. I hope the hundreds out there who can't be with us today for whatever reason, but are watching and listening, uh, we welcome you to, to our school. In June, you embarked upon a journey of transformation, both professionally and personally. And it's hard to believe that in only six months, uh, you have started your journey to become a PA with the ultimate goal of making a real difference to healthcare. We share with you your aspiration to lead change that is really necessary if we are really going to improve the lives of families, communities, and those who we care about. And in doing this, we need to be knowledgeable and compassionate. Hopefully, you realize by now that you've joined a community of dedicated and compassionate colleagues, students, faculty, some of whom you will hear from today, staff, of course, who make all this work, um, and supporters who all work together for you to help patients achieve optimal health. From your first day, as you may recall, we challenge you to commit yourself to improving care while at the same time beginning to learn how to deliver care. We want you to develop the skills to lead in your future careers and with the person, family, community, at the very center of everything you do. We begin uh, 2023 knowing that the trials of the pandemic are not yet over. And it's clear that the lasting effects on healthcare are not going to go away, at least not soon. A recent Forbes report uh, says that, with regret, that the US is now among the most unhealthiest nations in the world, with many years lost in the progress we have made to improve life expectancy and quality of life. We know that isolation and quarantine fueled challenges have led to substance abuse and challenges with alcohol. And we also have to realize we have to work with those folks who have been burdened with long COVID. Uh, the erosion of American healthcare has never been greater. And your contribution and leadership to healthcare has become even more critical to what we are doing today. But today is a celebration. I hope after this event, you will take some time to reflect on some things. I would hope that you will think about what journey you want to take in your program and afterwards. I'd like to be sure that you're really keen what motivates you and excites you. And I ask you that you will continue to learn and maximize every opportunity that you have that we offer you here in the school. Our goal is for you to master academic content and feed your intellect. We will strive to build your capacity to work with others, to lead, to persevere when it's tough, and to nurture your spirit of compassion. I look forward to the ways uh, you will form a community of scholars, sharing your rich experiences through the diverse languages of your past and the shared language of your futures here at Betty Arin Moore School of Nursing. The drive to seek intellectual challenges and a compassion to improve lives unites you all. I want to wish every one of you uh, every success in your studies with us as you progress during your courses. And at this point, um, I am delighted uh, to welcome your PA director, uh, Dr. Teresa Thetford to the stage. And thank you very much.
Thank you, Dean Kavanaugh. Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see you. You guys clean up pretty well. <laughs> it's great. It's pretty exciting. So this is an exciting day. Today, we celebrate your entry into patient-facing aspects of healthcare education with this white coat ceremony. A little bit of history about the white coat ceremony for some of you in the audience who may not know what that is. So although the ceremony itself is relatively a recent tradition, the symbolism of the white coat in medicine dates back over a century. Before physicians dressed in white coats, most, most physicians in the Western world were black. Until the late 1800s, physicians in the United States wore black formal wear, similar to what a tuxedo looks like. Uh, in the masterpiece painting by Thomas Eakins called The Gross Clinic, painted in 1875, it shows Philadelphia, it's not gross for that, it's somebody's name. <laughs> um, it uh, shows Philadelphia surgeons in black attire performing surgery wearing black. Physicians wore black for their patient interaction since medical encounters at that time were thought to be very serious and formal. <clears throat> An addition or alternative possibility for the dark garb might be that in the late 19th century, seeking medical advice was usually a last resort. And until the uh, third uh, part of the 1800s, an encounter with a physician was often thought of little to no benefit to the patient because there wasn't that good of outcomes and treatment for patients. But about the same time, the idea of antisepsis was taking hold in Europe. It was Joseph Lister's contribution that truly moved medicine from home remedies and non-scientific practices to the realm of bioscience. Remarkably, this progression was documented in Eakin's 1889 operating theater masterpiece painting entitled, entitled The Agnew Clinic. In this, Dr. D. H. Agnew uh, can be seen in a white smock with assistants also wearing white suggesting the new cleanliness and um, the sense of sterility in the, uh, pervaded the environment. In other words, we went from sterile and very clean environment from that dark black garb. This fostered an image of healthcare providers being clean and sanitary in their white attire. Shortly after the Agnew painting, a major report came out called the Flexner Report in 1910. And this led to the closure of um, many a large number of borderline educational medical schools because they weren't teaching to the medicine. And so it closed these schools and it restructured medical education. This is just 1910. This is when everything really started changing and we started using science for medical school. So at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, when medicine became based on science, that pureness of medicine became reflected in the garb of physicians and nurses. As medical schools adopted a rigorous, standardized curriculum based on science, historians believe that licensed physicians embraced the white coat to differentiate themselves from doctors who did not have formal credentials and others who were just peddling potions. By 1915, almost all licensed physicians in the United States wore white coats. So the white coat ceremony for incoming medical students actually began as recently as 1993, when Dr. Arnold P. Gold instituted it at the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York. Although one could argue this started a few years earlier in 1989 at the University of Chicago. However, Dr. Gold initiated the practice because he believed that medical students should recognize the profession's standards and responsibilities before they begin their formal training. He said students should declare the commitment and accept their obligation to the profession before starting medical school. So the white coat is to remind students of their professional duties as described by Hippocrates, which is to lead their lives and practice their art in uprightness and honor. The white coat is a symbol of our medical profession. So this tradition of white coats has expanded to several other health professions, such as pharmacy, optometry, veterinary, advanced practice nursing, and yes, physician assistant. Who, and it's actually celebrated na internationally now, not just in our country. So we use this white coat ceremony as an opportunity to underscore those responsibilities and your commitment to the care of patients that you'll provide uh, the care over the span of your career. 
So I congratulate all of you at this important transition in your education. This is, in fact, an exciting and important moment in your educational journey, as you are committing to providing care for the health and wellness of others. So students, I'd like you to just take a minute, and I want you to hold out your hands and look at your hands for a minute. Just take a look at your hands. Look at those hands and think about how these hands, how your hands will provide care and comfort to so many people. Take this white coat milestone seriously as you are taking the steps towards hands-on patient care. This is a very big commitment on your part. You're gonna be giving this hands-on care as a PA. And as Dean Kavanaugh said, this is a journey of transformation. So as we move forward, it probably seems like a long ways away for 27 months of your completion time, right? This is a big day, but got a few more things to do. But we thought it would be um, really kind of fun to get and hear this pers perspective from someone who was in your shoes just a year ago today, a member of the 2023 PA class to shed, shed some light on what's ahead for you. So please join me in welcoming student Victoria McKinney Brooks, a second year PA student here at UC Davis. Hello all. So as she addressed me, my name is Victoria McKinney Brooks and I am a member of the 2023 cohort. And some of you may recognize me as Tori if you're my littles in here. But as I stand here today and look at all your excitement and anticipation for the end of this ceremony and the moment a brand new white coat is placed on your shoulders, I think back to my white coat ceremony and the path I've, tra I've navigated since. For me, receiving my white coat was one of the highlights of my UC Davis education. It rekindled my passion for completing the program after a trying first term to which you all can probably attest. There is a long road, however, between the white coat ceremony and graduation, and it is sometimes hard to keep that fire lit and remember why you started here in the first place. So as the student speaker today, I'm gonna to give a few pointers on how to make the most of these 27 months in between your classes. Number one, don't lose these two years. While studying and preparing are important, you are more than just a PA student. These are wise words from our own professor, Imond, and he, it was a motto I promised to live by after he mentioned it in our skills lab. I utilized my free time to understand what it meant to live in Sacramento and to be a part of this community. I rejoined dance, volunteered for city cleanups, and made memories in and out of the Betty Irene study halls. I encourage you to explore and look at your year, proud of your accomplishments in academia, but also that you pushed out the most in every experience while you're here. Number two, engage now, start your future now. The intelligent and diverse students sitting on either side of you at this ceremony will be your future colleagues. Make connections, friendships, join school clubs and clinics together and start building your foundation as a future clinician. This PA program offers many extracurriculars that adjunct your learning and give you a safe place to practice your skills. I had the honor of joining the JVMC Clinic and the Student Academy of Physician Associates. Both taught me how to advocate for my profession and speak with patients in the capacity that I am training for. Participating in any activity here will give you a huge advantage in the coming terms. Number three, talk about your mental health burnout and the school life balance. PA school is an accelerated environment that prepares you for great patient care, but it can test your limits. Take breaks, find a hobby and stick with it throughout school to decompress and talk to your friends. Also as a UC Davis student, mental health services are available when you need them. You as an individual are the most important aspect of this entire process, so take care of yourself. Number four, put yourself out there and your best foot forward. My surgery rotation preceptor explained to me that there can, there can always be an opportunity for you if you make one and you have the right attitude. Clinical rotations are quickly approaching for your cohort and they are one of the most rewarding aspects of our program if you refuse to stop learning and stop engaging. Last month, I was able to hold a live beating heart in my hands and help operate on it. And you may be given this chance or a moment very similar to it. Strengthen your confidence and professionalism within your remaining time in didactic to scope your clinical time and elevate your education. 
My last piece of advice is that every time you face an obstacle here, get past it, celebrate it, and don't stress about it twice. There will always be another farm test, an IRAT or a patho test that you've completely forgot to study the lungs for. That's okay. You are all doing incredible things and are meant to be here. Remember when you face the moments, how you have applied yourself, how far you've come, and that you've gotten past every situation that you've stressed about so far. In closing, I wanna welcome you to the next step of your career. When you receive your white coat today, you will take on a new responsibility and privilege to your patients, your community, and to yourself. Wearing a UC Davis white coat means your responsibility to be a perpetrator of leadership, diversity, and humility while in practice. Internalize your why for becoming a physician associate and continue to persevere in your education with these pointers as a guide. What makes PAs after graduation is the person that you are alongside the white coat and the education. Congratulations class, cohort of 2024, thank you. Thank you so much, Victoria. It was great. Great advice and strategies on how to be successful, but also how to take care of ourselves. And the wellness is certainly a, a very important part in PA school and in all of our lives. So that's important. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to invite the PA faculty to join me on stage, Professor Phil Eman. <laughs> Professor Nitsa Sebat. and Professor Michelle Tao. Please join me on stage. And we'll begin in the, uh, the donning of the coats at this time. Okay, so I think we need to go first. Nilafar Abdul is being coded by Professor Dr. Sam Sankaran Walters. Mohammed Adal is being coded by Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Daniel Alonzo is being coded by Program Director Dr. Teresa Thetford. Sabrina Arsala is being coded by her mother, Mary. <laughs> Mary and Galen Art Artilli is being coded by her significant other, Joseph. Guyana Afghanian is being coded by Program Director Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Braden Bowis is being coded by his wife, Carly. Britta, Britta Bowers is being coded by her mother, Andrea. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Leah Castleberry is being coded by her father, Raymond. Noel Daly is being coded by her father, James. <laughs> Haley Dang Trin is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Vanessa Dow is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Eric Davis is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Maria Delfino is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Samreen DeRewal is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Tra Doe is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Lily Yuang is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Jacob Duran is being coded by his wife, Lupe. <laughs> Amy Marie Elizaga is being coded by Professor Dr. Sam Sinkaran Walters. Phil Iman will continue reading the students' names. Elizabeth Ellis Falick is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Tedford. Caitlin Marie Fernandez is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Christine Garcia is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Philip Gernard is being coded by program director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Jessica Gonzalez is being coded by her husband, Dr. Hernandez.
Irvin Hernandez is being coded by his father, Rodolfo. Ryan Ho is being coded by his significant other, Nikki. <laughs> Gabriel Incleto Bascara is being coded by his mother, Wilma. Dana Ismael is being coded by Professor Liu. <laughs> Anna Kozik is being coded by Program Director Dr. Teresa Thetford. Jin Lu Lan is being coded by Program Director Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Reed Serena Ling is being coded by her husband, Daniel. Anthony Liu is being coded by Program Director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Lillian McColl is being coded by Program Director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. Brianna Morton is being coded by Program Director, Dr. Teresa Thetford. <laughs> Esther Navarro is being coded by her father, Juan. Concepcion Paz Gonzalez is being coded by her sister, Olga. <laughs> Brianna Perot is being coded by her mother, Jane. Professor Tao will read the remainder of the names. <laughs> Ronalyn, sorry, Ronalyn Reyes is being coded by Program Director Teresa Thetford. Ome Olin Ruiz is being coded by Professor Brent Liu.
Sarah Salas Huang is being coded by Program Director Teresa Thetford. Ineda Sanchez Tegel is being coded by Program Director Teresa Thetford. Savannah Schaefer is being coded by her father, Daniel. <laughs> Shireen Shaheen is being coded by her sister Malik. Samantha Stevens is being coded by her mom, Teresita. <laughs> Jerusalem Tesfai is being coded by her son, Hiab. Valeski Tariko is being represented by her mother, Rosa. She wasn't able to attend today. Thank you. 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 Viri Diana is being coded by Program Director Teresa Thetford. Anna Maria Vasilieva, sorry, Vasilieva is being coded by her mama, Lana. Lucas Vine is being coded by his girlfriend, Erica. <laughs> Dustin Weaver is being coded by his son, Keldon. and Dr. Sam. <laughs> Megan Yamamoto is being coded by her father, Greg.
Caitlin Young is being coded by her spouse, Joshua. <laughs> Amanala Zadron is being program, uh, excuse, sorry, coded by program director, <laughs> Teresa Thetford. Osvaldo Zarco is being coded by his sister, Diana. Jinwei Zhou is being coded by program director, Teresa Thetford. Thank you, everyone. That's okay. So how awesome do you look in your white coats out there? We need like a picture from up here, I think. Well, we'll get one afterwards. How's that? We'll get you all up here. So let's not forget this. So congratulations to all of you. As you know, I'm pretty sure you know this by now, our goal here at UC Davis is to develop the highest quality, compassionate healthcare providers who are prepared to deliver care in areas where it's needed most and expanding access for our growing populations. We are committed to developing clinicians who are fully prepared to work as members and leaders of healthcare teams. Team-based care is the way forward in practicing patient care delivery, and it certainly improves patient care outcomes. You have remarkable opportunities ahead of you. You can change and advance health with your leadership and your skills. These changes will call upon you to think carefully about what you can contribute to caring to individuals, but also what you can contribute to society on a much broader scale. I'll speak for all of faculty. We can't wait to watch you continue to grow, develop, and become future healthcare deliver deliverers, deliverers, providers, how's that? <laughs> Let's do providers and leaders, and you're gonna be PA leaders. We need that in our profession as well. We are so very proud of you. And I wanna thank all the family and friends in here also. We know that they are successful because of family and friends support. And we acknowledge that and appreciate all you are doing to help your loved ones be successful here. So thank you. So this concludes our event this evening. We ask that you please um, join us for some light refreshments afterwards. And thank you again for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Students, come on up here. Let's get some photos. Looks like you guys already know how to do this. Guess not. Thank you.